Collecting is a slippery slope. You start with one goal, you hit the goal, you move the goalpost, you start collecting other things, and then you're just like, oh, well, what if I did this? What if I did that? I think I've already done this about four times. Initially, when I started collecting, it was mostly just like PlayStation 2 stuff that I was trying to get that like, I, I just wanted to fill my PlayStation 2 shelves. And then it was, I wanted to replace all of my PlayStation 2 Platinum games. And then it was, well, I might as well just replace all of my Xbox stuff with PlayStation stuff so that it looks more coherent and it's the consoles that I love the most because I usually prefer PlayStation to Xbox. I still need to work out something to do with that those piles, by the way. Like, if you've got piles, you should probably sort them out, right? Speaking of piles, if you guys haven't already, please do drop me a subscribe. About a third of you haven't, and we've got a space for a silver play button there one day. Even when I replaced my Platinum games, I still kept them because I am very large into nostalgia, and every single one of those Platinum games was the original way that I would have played that game when I was a child. So it's my very first Resident Evil 4, it's my my original Simpsons Hit and Run, it's my first few Prince of Persia games, and they all hold memories and stories for me. I distinctly remember being in Asda, I think, when it was either my mum or my nan, probably my nan, I'm not sure, it was usually my nan that was buying me games, was trying to get me Prince of Persia Sands of Time on the PlayStation 2. And I remember when we were at the checkout, I said something about looking forward to playing this when I get home, and the cashier was like, ooh, because obviously we're not really supposed to be selling games to kids. Although I remember that when I worked at Tesco, the rules behind that were not exactly as linear or as straightforward as it was with, say, alcohol, where you absolutely cannot sell it. It's like rules versus laws, you know? So, like, I like owning things that hold memories and nostalgia for me. And as I said, collecting is a slippery slope, and in this video we're going to go through a few things that I'm probably not going to collect, because... The slope can only get so slippery before you slide off it and die. Have I ever thought about collecting different versions of consoles like the 50th anniversary for PlayStation 5 that comes out soon? No. I don't have the space, my friend. I don't I don't have the space for the things that I have, let alone massive things like that. It was stupid of me. I bought a PlayStation 1 a while ago. It's like back there behind the TV just because I thought it would be cool to have and there was a bit of a spot for it. I, I don't need a PlayStation 1. I've got a PlayStation 2 that's backwards compatible with PlayStation 1. I am pretty certain that all PS3s, I could be wrong, are also backwards compatible with PlayStation 1. And in reality, if we're being truly honest, if I was to play PlayStation 1, I'd use something called Duck Station, maybe. It's, it, you never know. I do apologise if you can hear hoovering right now. My partner is hoovering. I'm hoping that that's not really being picked up on the camera. We'll see later, I suppose. But, like, I am definitely not collecting brand new consoles. Like, that 50th anniversary PS5, what's that going to cost? 500 quid? I ain't, I ain't doing that. I've got a PS5. We got two PS5s. I, a couple of years ago, for, like, Christmas or a birthday or something, I got my partner one. It was mostly so that we can watch DVDs in the living room as well, but, like, we have a PS5 in the living room and up here. We don't need a third one. Like, I, I know that... See, this is the interesting part. You know when I did my setup tour and I talked about how my room function comes first before, like, just putting stuff in it for the sake of putting stuff in it? It's why I consider a lot of other collectors to have better games rooms than me, because they serve the purpose of gaming better. Like, I'll see units with just, like, 27 consoles or something crazy like that, and I, it couldn't be me because I just don't have the space, nor would it be very practical for what I'm, you know, doing. The closest thing to, like, impractical collecting I have when it comes to consoles is my Xbox One down there, which got decommissioned when the Series X came out. See, that that wooden thing that it's on is where my consoles used to live in my old house before we moved, and it's not plugged in. I was tempted to go and get the PlayStation 4 out of storage as well, just to put it there for the sake of being able to show it in a video, but again, it would never get used because PlayStation 5 exists and most PlayStation 4 games work on it. The closest thing to that that I might do is at some point I am a little bit tempted to buy a PlayStation 4 that comes with PT, just because I miss being able to play PT and it'd be good for content and I really wish I could play PT whenever I wanted. But I'm pretty content with the console setup that i got now with my PS2, the 360, the Series X, the Switch, the PS5 and the PS3, and then back there, hang on back here, navigate me around, navigate me way around all the tripods, uh, the, uh, the the Nintendo Wii, which is actually plugged in, and the PS1, which is basically just used to hold the retro tank, because, yeah. I think I saw in a video that Retro Ghetto was, like, interested in getting all the different faceplates for the 360, because the faceplates all look pretty cool, but then, who has the space to display, like, 37 different Xbox 360s or something crazy like that. If I was to ever collect stuff like this, it'd be when I've got stupid amounts of money and stupid amounts of space. Like, if we ever get, like, a... Like, because we're never having kids, if we ever get a house above three beds, we're just getting into the territory of having pointless amounts of rooms. Or maybe I'd build something in the, in the garden one day. I don't know. There is a massive-ass spider climbing outside my window right now. That better not come in. 
my window is shut. That is a bit creepy. I'll burn this house down with that spider. That... By Kuon, the spider needed to die. Next up on the slippery slope of collecting, would I collect trading card games and things like that? Um, I kind of started when I was a kid. I was very obsessed with Yu-Gi-Oh when I was young. I have no idea what happened to the vast majority of those. Like, people that notice the stuff that I've got hung around my room have seen these before, where I've got the Egyptian God cards, three blue eyes, red eyes, shining dragon, and dark magician in a frame here. But, like, this is about the extent of my cards, because I like being able to display the things that I have uh, when it comes to stuff like this. I was really obsessed with Yu-Gi-Oh when I was younger. My my mother attributes my ability to read to the character illustrations of Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 1 and my maths with playing Yu-Gi-Oh pretty obsessively, which is interesting. Like, if I was to ask her, those are the answers that she'd give you. Uh, I have no idea what happened to, like, the vast majority of my Yu-Gi-Oh cards when I was a kid, or Pokemon cards. I had a decent chunk of them as well. I, I, they're somewhere, potentially, maybe. I'm, I'm not sure. Um... I really do like cards, but it's again a case of I've got no space for them, nor would they really serve much practical purpose. And it's a very slippery, expensive slope if you start getting into some of the cooler stuff. Like, some cards can go for so much amounts of money that it makes Kuon look like nothing. Meanwhile, like, I know that these are shiny and framed and I love them and all that sort of thing, but these cards are all dirt cheap. Like, I think each one of these was no more than £3 max. Like, they're all cheap versions of whatever the cards is. I just, my only requirement was they be shiny before they went in here. I don't even know, like, the rarity system. If, you, if you've if you paid any attention to, like, the rarity system in, like, Yu-Gi-Oh, it goes crazy. There's, like, 20 different rarities and about 17 of them are shiny. I just was like, shiny, not shiny. Needs to be shiny. That was about it. Like, if you look at the red eyes, the red eyes is something different to all of the others as well. I I, I don't know. But I am I love cards when it comes to Pokemon and, and Yu-Gi-Oh, but I don't think I could ever actually do it because, again... I'd want to display stuff, and I've got no space for stuff, and I also like things to serve somewhat of a purpose. Like, I generally try not to buy games if I don't have the intention of also playing the games. Um, yeah. And then if we talk about, like, the graded card portion of this question, that would be even scarier at that point, because if they're not being displayed, like, properly over there, then where are they? They could just be in a drawer, and then it's like, now we're graded stuff, I'm concerned about it getting damaged over time, or just... Something like that. It's just, nah. Cards Cards are very, very fragile. Like, I remember the first time I, like, held a Yu-Gi-Oh card as an adult versus when I was a kid, and I was like, why does this feel so flimsy? Because I remember them being larger and thicker, and they're really not. Like, Yu-Gi-Oh cards especially are pretty tiny. Come to think of it, I actually do have one more card that isn't on display, and it's, um, Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, just because... Well, 3x3 three three looks best and there's no room for Ultimate Dragon. Feasibly, I could have put it, like, there and replaced it with Shining Dragon, but Shining Dragon holds a lot more nostalgia to me because um, of the Yu-Gi-Oh! movie. It was the one that I got with the Yu-Gi-Oh! movie. It was... I loved that card. I loved that movie. Speaking of that movie, there's that movie, Yu-Gi-Oh! the movie. I miss the days when, like, cartoons would just straight up have, like, name of thing, the movie. It'd be Yu-Gi-Oh! the movie. Digimon the movie. Anybody remember the Digimon rap? You know? I, I mean, to be fair, I don't exactly follow cartoons these days to see if the cartoons do get movies anymore, but I do prolifically go to the cinema, so I feel like I would notice if there was. Very, very rarely, sometimes there's some sort of error at the cinema where they show the wrong trailers for the film that you're watching. I remember, I think it was Smile 1 a couple of years ago, and we kept getting, like, Tra trailers for Angry Birds and Trolls and, like, the kids' trailers. Generally, if you see a family or children-based film, you'll get children-based adverts. You see a horror film, you get applicable adverts, you know? And occasionally they mess it up, and I remember that was a thing that happened at one point where I was seeing, like, tons of kids' trailers I'd never seen before. Because, again, if you go to the cinema as frequently as we do, one of the most annoying things about that is the fact that you will see the same trailers up on repeat over and over again. And the final part of this slippery slope is... Do I or would I collect graded games? Granted, you can't play them, but perhaps buying a graded copy of a favourite game would be nice. Yeah, maybe. I feel like when it comes to my favourite games, I already have multiple versions of them to the point where it's kind of silly. I already own about nine different versions of Resident Evil 4 and like five different versions of Dark Souls 1 and Devil May Cry 3 and Borderlands 1. So like, meh. like the closest thing that I have to a graded game is my sealed Rule of Rose. And even that kind of concerns me. Like, when I bought Rule of Rose, I had every intention of unsealing it, because I just did. But then I was like, you know what, I, I probably shouldn't. I don't know if the seal's real, it might not be, it might be. There's a lot of 
when when this shipment of because this was one of those that got found in Italy, blah blah blah. I paid about two hundred and seventy quid for it, despite the fact that that's just four hundred and ninety five. The staff at CEX gave me that so that I could use it for videos. But um, a lot uh, there was a lot of people that were like, oh, it's 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 going to be fake. It's it's all not real. Blah 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 blah. And generally, that comes from the fact that some people at some point probably did spend that amount of money on it, and they really 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 don't want to accept that maybe it's worth a bit less now because it is worth a bit less now. But just like I talk about with Kuon, where the price over time is what matters more, really. Not that the price matters at all, because I have no intention on ever selling it. But even though the price of Rule of Rose has come down recently, you can still probably expect it over time to creep back up. Because, yes, it might not be the third most expensive PlayStation 2 game anymore, because I think Michigan Report from Hell might have overtaken it. But it is still one of the most expensive games on the platform that is only going to continue to go up in price. So real or not, the seal, it doesn't really matter. Still in good condition. And everybody that's kind of a little bit angry about potentially their game being worth a bit less doesn't matter because you probably didn't actually intend to sell it. It's just a case of it's a bit of a kick in the teeth. I'm glad that I didn't get my Rule of Rose when I got Kuon because I could have done. Because when I got Kuon, right then and there was a Rule of Rose but with no manual for £440. But I waited two months and got this one from eBay for £270 sealed. So that was a win in my book no matter what happens from here on out. And again, for the most part, I do try to only buy things that I actually have intention of playing. The only times that I've not done that is for silly things like uh, completing a franchise. Like, for example, I'm kind of looking for GTA 2 uh, on the PlayStation 1 because that is the only GTA game that I don't own, along with along with Mortal Kombat 1-4 to on PS1. And then sometimes, like, with Resident Evil 4 or Borderlands or Dark Souls, God of War, I'll buy multiple of them. Speaking of, now that the sun's gone down, I can show this more easily. Like, I have several God of War trilogies scattered around the room because when I got the Framer game, which, by the way, Code Kale, if you want to get yourself something like this, you, you just want to Google. Framer game, the website comes up. You can basically get near enough anything framed. Use Code Kale to get yourself a bit of a discount. I got the God of War trilogy, but I didn't want to use my, like, childhood God of War trilogy. So I went out and rebought all three of them. So if we go over there to my game shelves. I still have God of War 1, 2, and 3 over there. And then I've got God of War 3 on the PS3, uh, the PS4 remaster as well. And then there is a Canadian version of the God of War saga that was released only there that contains all five games for the PlayStation 3 that I kind of want as well, just for the sake of collecting. But yeah, so we've got my childhood copies of God of War 1 and 2 here. And then if we go back over to the other shelves, because again, everything is a little bit everywhere... Uh, we have God of War 3 here, so yeah. So yeah, collecting is a slippery slope and there will always be more to add, but the problem is is that you kind of have to be realistic with it. Like right now, I'm in a bit of a period of time where when it comes to creating content on collecting, I'm in a bit of a sticky situation. Thankfully, it seems that you guys like the videos like this where I'm just sort of stood in my office talking about random topics enough that it keeps me afloat and everything goes well. Because realistically, I can't just keep mass producing CX haul videos because there's only so many things that I'm trying to buy. And I'm in a position now where I've got most of what I want. The only things that I want that I don't have right now are like a few different rare things. And like occasionally I'll add more to the list if I discover something else. But like for the most part, I'm not going to see X and coming out with bags of stuff anymore because there's only... I'd be buying duplicates. And to be fair, that'd be a decently bit profitable business idea. Just go and buy duplicates and just make videos on it and nobody be none the wiser. But I just I, I don't, I don't want to do that. So... I'm glad that you guys continue to watch these videos, even absent actual CEX hauls, because it shows that you like me and my content versus just whatever I'm buying from CEX that day, because obviously if I'm spending 50 quid at CEX every day, but the video makes 20 quid, that's not exactly a profitable business decision. Um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys later.